Shalom Chavriyim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Remember the report we did just about a day ago, forget exactly, maybe about 24 hours or so ago, about uh, U.S.-led coalition military advisors captured by the Syrian Special Forces in Aleppo. Let me just share a little bit of this with you. The coast of Syria, which actually struck and killed a large number of them in a bunker underneath the uh, ground there. This time, though, the Syrian Special Forces actually captured them. And according to the article right here, and, and quoting from, they were quoting from 21st Century Wire, where Fars uh, Shahabi... Now... That's just to kind of give you just a, a, the fact check there that we had we had covered this story the other day. There were some that did not believe that it was actually true, and now we are getting uh, breaking news from the UN Security Council. RT has actually uh, put this story up here, and the at the UN Security Council, uh, we are actually getting this information now fresh from them that indeed what we reported to you. Uh, more than 24 hours ago uh, has in fact actually happened. There are uh, those uh, U.S. coalition uh, backers of the U.S. Uh, or excuse me, the U.S. Uh, led uh, or backed uh, moderate rebels, uh, Al Qaeda, Al Nusra, the different fronts that are fighting there inside of Syria. They have their own people trapped. Listen to what they have to say here uh, from the U.N. Security Council here, uh, RT. Uh, breaking this story here from the UN Security Council that approves the Aleppo resolution. Say before you their names and their nationalities. Let me back it up or just a little bit. Part so, of Aleppo with the terrorist groups are trying to exit their strongholds in the eastern part of Aleppo. I will say before you their names and their nationalities. Mu'taz Oglakan Oglu, Turkish. David Scott Winner, American. David Shlomo Aram, Israeli. Muhammad Sheikh Islam Al Tamimi, Qatari. Muhammad Ahmed Al Sabyan, Saudi. Abdul Munaim Fahed Al Hraj, Saudi. Ahmed bin Saudi. Hassan Sou the whole point is of what's being said here uh, at the UN resolution by the uh, Syria Syria's ambassador there is that indeed it is true there are these different operatives that are working in behind the scenes there with the different as Syria considers it to be the terrorist organizations. Uh, that have been working to try to overthrow President Bashar al-Assad. So it is confirmed now by the uh, Syrian government here at the United Nations here. And let's just see what he has to say there as far as uh, uh, completing that. Let me kind of try to get to the end of the names here see where we're at on this. Who have foreign citizenship and nationalities are trying to escape from the eastern part of Aleppo with the terrorists. And this is why, and this is why, you saw this hysterical move in the council for the last three days. Because now, as he's talking about the hysterical move by the UN resolution, the council is trying to get a a ceasefire uh, brought into effect as quickly as possible. The reason why they are doing it is exactly what we reported the other day as well. And that was uh, because they had been captured, 14 foreign national fighters in there. Most of those were Saudis. There were Turkish, there were Qatarians, there were Americans, Israelis. All of them actually inside uh, helping the terrorist groups inside of Syria. Now, the issue is, though, is they wanted a ceasefire because the special forces, the Syrian special forces, had actually captured them. And uh, it made for a very serious situation. So now they're trying to rapidly get a ceasefire. The next thing that's going to happen, I want to play this as well. One of the uh, Western journalists, I believe, is going to challenge him on humanitarian aid. And I think his response is quite provocative. Listen to this. Because the main purpose is how to rescue these terrorist foreigners, intelligence officers, from the same countries who pushed for the adoption of the resolution out of Aleppo. Mr. Ambassador, the UN, the UN Ambassador, Ambassador says uh, at the highest level, the UN says, Mr. Ambassador, that uh, your government does not allow humanitarian aid delivery into Syria, and then you're saying that the UN is not doing its part. 
to deliver this humanitarian aid. Two, just two quick questions, Mr. Ambassador. One, uh, are you going to uh, implement this resolution in Syria uh, in full? And also, two, how, are you going to let the UN humanitarian aid delivery into uh, Aleppo and other parts of Syria? Thank you. The provision of the, revolution, of the resolution that we have just adopted in the Council has been implemented by the Syrian government for five years. So this is not something new for us. On the contrary, we are welcoming the good intentions, if there are any, behind the adoption of this resolution. Meaning that we would like to see genuine partners with us to implement the provision of this resolution. Because it has always been a one-way ticket while implementing the humanitarian uh, assistance in Syria. It has always been the Syrian government who provides 80% up to the, uh, from the uh, overall assessment of the, of the needs. So it is time for those who pretend they have good intentions towards the Syrian people to share with us, with the Syrian government, these burdens, humanitarian burdens. So we are not that sad with this resolution because it is part of our... As we already know from the different reports that we've been able to gather as well that's going on inside of Aleppo there, uh, what little bit of UNA did make it into eastern Aleppo had always been hoarded by the uh, fighting factions. Uh, and therefore, the people never got the aid to start with. Uh, and another thing as well, uh, it was reported by uh, Russian media as well, that um, the, that the uh, British government, for example, never sent not even a single gram of flour uh, of humanitarian aid in for the people. And of course, what the uh, Syrian ambassador is referring to as far as goodwill is that, that they're not shipping in weapons and arms uh, under the guise of a UN humanitarian aid convoy. And that's where the big issue comes in. And of course, once their people are trapped inside, again, this is why the, the radical uh, movement uh, within the Un United Nations here over the last few days trying to get a ceasefire because their people were captured inside of there and they want to get those people out of there. And the nice thing is, is that the Syrian government is willing to allow them to leave. Uh, but it is kind of interesting to me to see just how many nations are actively involved inside of eastern Aleppo. Uh, and again, Turkish, uh, as it's being brought out at the UN Security Council here meeting uh, by the, by the uh, Syrian ambassador there, that there is a Turkish uh, uh, intelligence officer as well among these. And yet Russia has been trusting Turkey the entire time as they have moved in tons of tanks uh, troops and, and grad launchers and everything else into the region of northern Syria. Uh, I think that's just a, a, a bit odd uh, to begin with. Of course, we know the United States also has a base in eastern uh, uh, Syria uh, that is not that was put in not at the invitation of the Syrian government. So it is quite uh, quite a quagmire, quite a huge mess inside of Syria. Uh, but this is the latest report that is coming out. And again, as we stated before. Uh, a day ago that we had reported this following uh, Century 21 Wire, their report that indeed there were 14 foreign intelligence officers captured by the Syrian Special Forces inside of Syria now coming out at the UN Resolution uh, Approval Meeting. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.